adjusted flange. So you can see at the top here, that is actually a picture of the icon and what it looks like in Solid Edge 2020. So our previous versions of Solid Edge gave us the capability to create lots of flanges. But to achieve those bend lines, the user would have to go into the bending method tab, okay, and then select the option to use triangular, uh, triangulation, and then single option for the number of resultant bends. So you can see here now with our lofted flange options under our general, this is what our picture looks like for our bend relief, our bend relief or the extend relief and the corner relief. And then next, the bending methods. So here we have that use triangulation to develop the each blend. So we put that under the options. So next, the bend tables would only allow you to pick up the two bends, whether you use the bend lines or not. So the bend marks were only written in DXF within the sheet metal environment. So you can see our bend table shows us our sequence. Here's our number one, number two. We can actually even reorder those and what our angles are. So next, the manufacturability enhances. So the vertex mapping breaks a lofted flange into planar or transition range regions. So you can see here's our transition and our planar regions. So you can see where it breaks in between the two. The transition regions are manufactured via bump bending on a brake on a break, press, press brake or improved algorithms handled in a much wider variety of cases producing a flattenable and manufacturable results. Our manual vertex mapping gives us the gives the user the ability to create designs that would not be possible via algorithm and freedom to control the shape of the lofted flange. So such cases as one to one, one to many, arc to line, symmetrically, asymmetrically, parallel, non-parallel, and many more are much easier to achieve. So we threw some examples up there using the lofted flange command. So some of our bend line options so this the expandable options are now available for users to define how many bend lines are placed on a conical or cylindrical transition region. So you can see here under our, our window here, so we've got the bend line selected. The number of results of bends are 10. So some of these parameters are used to calculate the number of the bends on a larger radius size of the flange. So you can see here in the middle, what is my A and my B and my C dimension? So if I calculate a 10, it's going to give me what the, the angles of the, of the segments are, what's the length, and what's the height. And then the next slide is going to show me what my bends are. So my bending methods, so you can see here, I've highlighted it in red, what are my bends? So the bends options create the real bends between the planar faces or planar plates. The triangulation, triangulation options are the same as for the bend line options, except for that this option, the user defines the number of segments in each input. So you can see here, what is my number? So last, the last slide we had 10, this time we've got 20. So next we get into some of the bends options under the loss of flange. So when we're using the bends option, the system generates bends may be added as needed to prevent twisted planes and create a result in flattened accuracy. So you can see here down below, we've got no generated bends in the middle. We're over here on the right-hand side, we've got the system generated bends going through the parts, okay? So in this example, it shows the middle arcs of one with no system generated bends, bends had the same sweep angle. <coughs> Excuse me. So some of the manual vertexes can be used with the bend options, but points defined by the user will be moved to the nearest triangulated vertex. Otherwise, the triangulation would become invalid. So you can see here over to the right-hand side, what is my, my initial result and what is my final result? So what we did is we added that manual vertex right in the middle that gave us our, gave us our end result over here. Okay, so the system prevents, the system generates bends are only present if the input cross sections create a face that are non-planar, cylindrical, or conical. 
So next, the automatic, automatic vertex mapping algorithm, algorithm helps to achieve better creation success rate without user intervention. So you can see here in the lofted flange option. So too many real world combinations to make the automatic, automatic method work 100% of the time. The manual vertex mapping gives the user the ability to fully control the parameters, the parameterization of the lofted flange. And then next we get into the vertex mapping where a user can add new sets by clicking on the add button or the right mouse button of the graphic windows. So when adding new sets, you must select two points from the cross sections to be connected by the vertex mapping. If you right click twice in a row, the first right click will be added a new set and the second will accept the changes and close the dialog box. So what I'll do is let me show you a little video on this one so it's a little easier to spell out. Let's go quickly back over to vertex mapping. Now, in some cases, you only need to give, uh, you only need to create a set of, um, you know, map sets like I did here, and it, it straightens out the whole model. But if you want to do more than one, um, you you don't have to come over to the dialog box. For example, if I want to create a new a vertex map, a right mouse button click. Notice it added set three, which is a single right mouse button click. So I can click here and I can click here. If I right click again, I can click here and click here. So by right mouse button clicking, I can, uh, I can add new sets without going back to the dialog. Now, if I don't want that last one, obviously I can delete it. And then if I right click twice, it's going to dismiss the dialog and create the lofted flange. So a single right click will add a new set for vertex mapping and uh, two right mouse button clicks will dismiss and create uh, the lofted flange for you. So that's just kind of a quick uh, user interface demo that I thought I would share. All right, so you get the idea. So now that what he's talking about, the vertex mapping sets can be deleted either by selecting them from the dialog or clicking on the delete button. So you can see during the video, he actually can select the delete button. So next, the user can partially define the vertex mapping for the areas they want to control and let the command automatically figure out the rest of the mapping. So you can see the auto release option. So if you see over here on the right hand side, the auto release option, we have a linear, spherical, okay? So you can see here the different options. What is my linear? What is my circular? Or circular with trim ends plates off. So you can see where it goes right to the point. Okay, it doesn't trim. So here we've got the check mark with the trim on, and that's why it gives it to you, gives it to you there. Next, we get into the bend tables. So improve, uh, improves to provide needed information in the manufacture of lofted flange. The previous behavior when using the bend table with the bend lines, so you can see here on the first example what it looked like beforehand, and then the bend lines now. Can be listed individually so here you can list them individually and what our lofted flanges are so you can see the different vertexes one through eight so the bend lines and a transitions are reordered as a group reordering will reorder the group the user can manually overwrite the angular fields so you can see here they're highlighted in, in yellow there so you can actually go back in there and make changes to that what I mean by that, you can overwrite the fields of mark and update it with those change. So next, the draft bend table will reflect the improved made in the sheet metal improvement. So you can see here, this is my flat. So when you do my flat, flattened part, it gives you the bend tables and shows you what the, the angles are, the directions, 